So this video is a little bit different than usual. This time it's going to be a uh, hardware repair, I guess you could call it, even though it's very basic. Here I have a little uh, Nintendo NES here that I bought specifically to uh, steal its little front flap to put it on my regular Nintendo, which uh, must have had some sort of different casing on it or something, because it doesn't quite fit on there right. It always kind of stays open a little bit. I also had to glue it because it broke again. Lovely. Anyway, so I bought this one that was broken, specifically it's still that little part, but I'm going to fix whatever is wrong with it today, and I know exactly what's wrong with it. So after messing around with it for a while because it has the old ZIF socket in it, and of course it doesn't work very well, we can start it up and immediately see what was wrong with it. Well, that wasn't quite right. There's a little bit of garbled mess in the background. In some games you probably wouldn't even notice this, depending on where the the background is on the name table. I guess I'll show you what I mean by that here in a bit, even though you probably already know about this crap. Let me just get up to where that would be. If I don't die first. Alright, so it's basically a couple bytes on the uh, name table, which is the video memory specifically for uh, tiles in the background. So I didn't explain it very well what the name table does in the video that I recorded a week ago, so I'm going to attempt to try and do that again. So as you can see on the screen here, we have those four corrupted blocks in the background, and uh, the Nintendo has three different areas of memory. It has the work RAM, the VRAM, and the PPU's internal memory for storing sprite locations and attributes and stuff. Anyway, the VRAM is specifically for holding the name table, as it's called, and what that is is just the uh, the background map, I suppose. So, I'm going to use Metroid, it's a little bit easier to explain what's going on here. Well, most emulators have a uh, name table viewer. This this is the only one I got right now, it's a uh, Virtua NES, so that's like an old emulator that no one ever uses anymore, for obvious reasons, it's old as shit, use something better if you want to play some video games. Anyway, um, as you can see, well, you can't really see it, but the name table is a 4 kilobyte address space, but the VRAM is only 2 kilobytes big, so what it does is what every other computer does when it has a bigger address space than its, uh, actual memory and it starts mirroring it or repeating it over and over and over again. But the thing with the Nintendo is that you can switch the mirroring from vertical to horizontal. I guess it's all about how it, it arranges the memory on the VRAM itself. But what this what this does for the Nintendo is that it allows smooth scrolling between this big area here. See the screen of your TV is only covering about a quarter of the size of the entire name table and it can scroll per pixels very smoothly across the entire thing, but most games like Metroid will only use like the top half or like the left half or whatever side. Unless you're playing something like Super Mario Bros. 3, which uses the the horizontal mirroring and just like moves the entire thing around. It's pretty crazy how it does that. It's beyond uh, my skill for explaining, but as you can see, the Nintendo starts loading blocks in before you move there so you can scroll per pixel on onto the new uh, area. Most, most of the older consoles than this did not really have big amounts of video memory, so they had to, had to work out their own ways of doing things, but as you can see on the Nintendo, they have it built in. That's fancy 8-bit computing stuff. So anyway, right here on the other Nintendo that the Nintendo I try I'm trying to fix, the corrupted blocks would be about right here. And every time that the screen area goes over that zone in memory, you would see those four blocks come up again. It's not game-breaking or anything like that, it's just a slight visual defect. And, uh, pretty easy to diagnose, I suppose. Well, since I have a bad habit of deleting things I really shouldn't have, I guess I'm gonna have to go back and re-disassemble this after I just got out working. So, here we go, a quick little disassembly of the Nintendo, because everybody's seen this one already. You know, I could use the power of movie magic and just pretend that this was before I fixed the Nintendo, but I'm not even going to lie to you.
So you got six screw six. So you got six screws on the bottom. After that, the top comes off like so, and you drop another screw because that one did not come out. So this is the complex pile of crap that is the Nintendo. Uh, it's a lot more busy than it really needs to be. So you got two screws right or right there. You got two screws up there and three screws right here holding the shielding onto the top. Go. Alright, so after you get those seven screws out, the top here just comes right off after you jiggle it around unceremoniously. And uh, from here, there's only a couple more screws left. You gotta take the screw, these two screws out right here. This uh, middle one right here, this, these lower two, not the, not the end ones, you don't have to take those off. And the front ones right here. Keep in mind that the two in the back here are slightly longer, so those will have to go in the same spot, or they should at least. Or maybe it was the front ones that were longer. Who knows, either way, the front ones are practically useless in the first place. All right, so now all you gotta do is just lift the entire bore out. But keep in mind, you'll have your, your connectors here. You've got your controller ports and your power switch and LED light, reset button, all that stuff over here. Just flip it around and give it an unplug. Then after this, the uh, the shielding on the top comes right off. Pretty simple stuff. Um, then you have this disaster here. You can either... Uh, take these two screws out and just re remove this carriage from the, the connector here. Or, do it the easy way like I do, and just make sure make sure that thing uh, can pass past the PCB and just kind of push on it. It should just come off, because on the end of there, it's just basically like another cartridge connector. Just wiggle it off, and there you go. You have your Nintendo motherboard. Obviously, you got or, uh, your PPU, the CPU, two RAM chips, and uh, the horrible NES lockout chip that I've already went ahead and uh, snipped the leg on. So you'll never get the blinkies again if you snip that specific leg. There's probably a million, billion, zillion videos about that, so I'm not going to bother. And uh, this is why I'm not going to lie to you that uh, this is before I repaired it because... Those solder joints do not lie, they're pretty ugly. Well, now that it's been about a week, I got my uh, replacement RAM chip. And uh, since from our last little video in between making this one, I had swapped the uh, VRAM and the work RAM around, so we're gonna replace the work RAM instead because that's now the bad RAM chip. Of course, as usual with uh, me, there's probably an easier way to do it with more proper uh, tools. But I enjoy making soldering a disaster. For the last time, hopefully, there's probably better ways to do this that don't involve me doing what I'm going to do. This probably could potentially scratch my circuit board. There we go. My little itty bitty pry bar right here. I think I got it. I knew that one pin was still plugged up with solder and shit. So, <clears throat> there's that, the bad one I marked out the marker here. I guess we'll stick the new one in after I make sure my holes are at least somewhat clear. Get your butt in there. There we go. Ow. 
stab myself on the back side. Okay, so now it's in there. And all I'm gonna do is solder it up. Just uh, shove this right here. I probably should just scrub that off. That requires bleh, making a mess. Sweet. That should have uh, fixed this Nintendo. Now we'll have to uh, put all this junk back on here. Alright. The ugly Nintendo has been uh, repaired, I think. I'm going to do my victory lap before I turn it on the first time, so, just so I can look like an ass when it doesn't fucking work. Alright, now I got the thing hooked up. I got the best game ever, the Guardian Legend, uh, put into the Nintendo. You're going to watch it not work. Haha, <laughs> lucky us. Obviously, I did not do something right. So I got it working, but with the old RAM chip. I put the old RAM chip back on there. I know that's supposed to be through hole soldered, but it's kind of sticking out of there because I could, couldn't, uh, couldn't quite get it all the way through. After uh, unsoldering and soldering the shit up like 50 million times, things were starting to get a little bit dirty in the back of there. So I'm wondering if that RAM chip was just bad that I got on eBay. This is the old bad RAM chip. Uh, Dr. Mario didn't have any issues playing, but you know, stuff like uh, Guardian Legend did. So now we're back to having bad work RAM. Let me, uh... yeah, as you can see, the work RAM is still bad. So I'm gonna try putting another, another uh, module in. And hopefully it actually works. Maybe I had something soldered up wrong. I took my multimeter and tried to chase all the traces and all of them were making a good connection, zero ohms and all that good stuff. But maybe there are some connections in the middle of the PCB that weren't quite made. I'm not sure, but let's try it again. So here we are again. I got the uh, RAM chip reinstalled, the new one, and we got this. So it appears to be working a lot better now, so I'm going to go throw this casing back together and we'll see if I run into any issues playing video games. But I'm pretty sure it's been repaired now. Although, I'm thinking that it might have, might not have been how I soldered this on that caused the issue. With the Nintendo, well specifically this old Nintendo here, is that you got the 72 pin connector, the ZIF connector. So it has two or two points where it can fail to make proper contact to uh, attach the cart to the, the main system, I guess, just right here, and then uh, there's another connector right there, so I wonder if I just got that on crooked or something like that, because when I put my bad RAM chip back in, it started not working for a while until I jiggled it around, and, or jiggled this around, so maybe it worked in the first place and I was just loose back here, or not quite on the connector properly. Anyway, let's slap this thing back together and see what happens. So I did take it apart again to see what was wrong with it after I put it all the way back together and it stopped working again. Well, it turns out that the, the connector on the uh, main board was dirty. I cleaned that up and reinstalled everything here and I've realized why this uh, carriage stops working if you tighten these screws down too much and it's because of this. You can see that the carriage is mounted on top of the uh, the plastic mounting points of this uh, connector here. There's nothing to space it on the other side, so what it's doing is bending the whole carriage and putting undue strain on the motherboard, or the uh, main board, I guess. It just 
pulls up on this end, end here. So really there's practically no reason to even put the screws on there. I mean, I, could get, I guess you could just stick them in there and have them for, for looks maybe. But once they start touching that carriage, just leave them alone. Actually, you know what? That probably poses a, a shorting risk, honestly, if you leave them in there. Just leave those suckers out of there. Makes no sense why they even put that crap in there. It works just fine without it. And just another example of poor design on Nintendo's part. Without those screws uh, tightened down on the front of that carriage, the entire top casing makes contact with it. So, if it didn't fit in there in the first place, I mean, I don't know why they didn't alter the tooling or the, the molds for these things so that it had like a an angled uh, surface that it mounts on so it points down further. So you don't have to strain the motherboard and mess up you know, the connectors. It's just kind of stupid. All right, finally got back together to where the uh, cartridge part is working now. And as you can see, it's making it way, way further than it used to in Walk Rider. So I'm gonna play some video games for a while and I'll call this Nintendo Fix. And I'm gonna lose. Anyway, so if this is easy enough for me to do, certainly anybody else could uh, repair a Nintendo with the same problems, so. There you go, that's my stupid how-to, I suppose, of how to fix a Nintendo with bad memory. It's not really much of a how-to, just as a, an archive of just how poorly I did it. Anyway, see ya.